everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo. We are back for another episode review of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode two, Bad Bunny. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content, y'all. This episode was good. Goddamn you, VH1. Right when it was getting good, she wanna cut it off. Doom, 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 doom on next week's episode. No, I need to know what's gonna happen now. That's why I waited last week till I got to this week's episode, just so I can see this end part, just for you to cut it off. And I gotta wait a whole nother goddamn seven days for this. But y'all, the episode was still good. I hope y'all ready for the review, cause I'm ready to give it to you lot. Like. Let's go and get right on into it. So it picked up where it left off last time, right? April and Monice, they in some kind of little restaurant, bar, or whatever, and they talking. Now Monice's thing is that she don't appreciate, she don't appreciate the disrespect Respect that April's been showing her when it comes to her son. Now, as you've been in the blogs, or I don't know if you're into the blogs, if you watch this, if not, don't worry about it because I'll let you know what's been going on. So they're into it, Monice and April, because a while back, they went on a family vacation, meaning Fizz and April and her two kids, they went to Chicago. Fizz had Monice and his son, um, the boy, I can't remember the boy's name. I think she calls him Muffin. We gonna call him Muffin. Fizz had Muffin. And so he took him to Chicago. Monice didn't know nothing about that. She was upset about that. And then she just feels like April does the most. Now, let me tell you why I don't like April. Cause I ain't gonna lie, at first I didn't have no reason not to really feel April. But then the more and more I see her on social media, that whole live that she did when she was talking about all the niggas that had ran up in there, girl. Okay, but um, she likes to play this role like I don't do anything wrong, which I don't get that at all. Now, the one thing about Monice, one thing is for certain, two things for sure. She batshit crazy, but she damn sure ain't no liar, okay? Now, she will produce some receipts for that ass. I don't know if y'all been into the vlogs, into the blogs and all that. If you haven't, don't worry about it because I'll let you know. But, apparently, Jess Hilarious, who's another real big influencer, social media girl, yada, 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 right? This is a sidebar, other than what happened on the episode. Jess the Mess and um, April Jones, like, they were friends. They had got into it. Jess Hilarious had sent a bunch of voice messages or whatever to Monice. Monice just released all these voice messages because Jess was talking shit about April. Now, her and April are back cool, meaning Jess and April. So now they all on social media trying to smooth shit over, which really, April, I wouldn't really trust that bitch Jess because she dogged your ass out. But I'm getting way, way off topic. Focus mode. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. I don't like that April tries to play like she's so fucking innocent, like she don't do nothing wrong, which I don't gather that from you. I see from the shit, like I say, you put out there on social media all the time. She's steady going in on Monice just as much as Monice is going in on y'all. Y'all going in on her. But I feel like that's Monice responding back to the bullshit that y'all done already said or that y'all done already insinuated or put on there, or put out there about her. So, Monice does apologize for her part and whatever, you know, her role is in the drama that all of them have got going on. And so, they come to some sort of somewhat making up to where it's, it's like, oh, girl, okay, I forgive you. When really, you know, you how you like, all right, girl, cheers. Child later on, oh, Monice is in the studio. She invites April to come to the studio because Monice says that she has put in her own little coins together and she's gonna put together her own little tour. And so with that, she wants to invite April to go on tour with her. Now, Monice, like I said, she's batshit crazy. She ain't a liar and the bitch is always up to something. Now her thing is, she says, you know how the old saying goes, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. She figures if I get close to April, at least this way I can find out what's going on with Drew and what's going on with my son. Now, I, um... I get you want to know what's going on with your son. Not so much his baby dad. I mean, his father, that's just me. I, I, I don't understand that. I'm not in that situation, though. But April says that she has to, she's going to have questions that she's going to have to answer later on when it comes to little fizzle pop. I love it when Moni's calls him that. I love it. 
Love it. Little Fizzle Pop. So she says she already knows that Fizzle Pop is going to be asking her a bunch of questions like, why you hanging with my baby mama? Why the fuck you want to go on tour with my baby mama? What y'all touring about? Like, it's going to be a whole bunch of questions that she going to have to answer. So she says she going to talk it over with Drew. And then she'll get back to Monice about it. Lord have mercy, y'all. If they go on tour, I would like to see it. I would like to see the tour. What y'all gonna sing? The boy is mine. Let me shut up. Moving on from them. Y'all, so later on, April back at her crib or whatever, right? She in the kitchen and her little Victoria secretions got a little ass cheeks and her little bosoms and shit or whatever, right? In there cooking breakfast for none other than Lil Fizzle Pop. Now, Fizzle Pop claims that he spent the night over there because I guess the prior night it was late. And um, he's, he's got his stuff on store, I mean, in storage since he's been on tour with B2K. And so uh, him and April are best friends, so he's just over there kicking it. Boy, see, this is what I mean. It pisses me off. At this point, I already know you lying to me. So everything that you're saying at this point out is just pissing me off because you were fucking with my intelligence because I already know that y'all fucking around, whatever, right? Anyways, so he's telling her like, uh-huh, look at you up in here. Got your ass all out of shit. She was like, uh-uh, really? Do you... Do, do, is it really out like that? Do you think so? Bitch, you know good and damn well your ass was ass cheeks. Goodies and tushes, all of that was out. Stop playing with me. She knew that. She knew that. So she tells Fizzle Pop that Monice is putting together a tour and that Monice invited her to go on tour. Fizzle Pop said the funniest shit. He said, What this gonna be the uh BM2K? Baby Mama 2K in the millennium. Bitch, I fell out, I died. I came back to life and I died again. That nigga is wrong for that shit. Now, she asked him how has things been since they've been on tour. Now, Fizz says that one of Raz B, because you know Raz B and Fizz, they're on the tour bus together, right? Fizz says that one of Raz's people got into it, one of Fizz's people, which caused them to get into it. So now he's not on the bus with Raz anymore. That now him and Jay Boog are on the bus. I don't know what Raz is doing. And of course, we know Omarion, he's the queen. So he gonna get his own little old chauffeur and tour bus. He ain't fucking with y'all no damn way. You know, he on his zen sage shit. He ain't got time to go back and forth with you niggas. He's living his best zen life. And then the motherfucker gonna say, Fizz gonna have the nerve to say, Omarion still hasn't came to me and asked me anything about April. What the fuck does he need to ask you? You sleeping with his old lady, or his ex-old lady. So what is he gonna go to you and say something to you for? You know you wrong, you know what you're doing ain't right, and so you try to put it back on him, like he ain't came and he ain't said nothing to me about it, and if it is something serious, then I'll address it. No nigga, you wrong, that chick you fucking with is wrong, the both of y'all in cahoots together is wrong, and if I was Omar, y'all, I wouldn't say shit to you nothing. I bet you it's eating him up, eating him up. Just to know that this nigga know something, but he too cold to even say something to you. He got an icebox where his relationship used to be. He don't give a fuck about what y'all got going on. April does say that Omarion has Fizz in their deposition for court saying that they have an affair. Fizz ain't stupid. I mean, not Fizz. What's the motherfucking name? Omarion ain't stupid. He already know. Bitch, you can fuck around and do whatever you want to do, but I'm going to make sure I get this shit on paper. So you try to come through with some old dumb shit. I can't have that shit around my kids. I can't have that shit around my kids. Y'all, so one of my favorites is back. Apple Watts. I love Apple Watts. I follow her on social media. I think I like Apple Watts because she's just so ratchet and she's so real and she's so raw. She don't know how to be fake or phony out here in Hollywood with the rest of these hoes. All she know how to do is be her, her authentic Compton loped out self that she can be and I love her for it. Now she is, um, she went to go see Yo-Yo, bitch, you can't play with my Yo-Yo, yo, yo. That's the motherfucking queen, one of the queens of hip hop. Yo-Yo has a school of hip hop for young kids and so Apple goes and visits her there, corrupt from the dog pound click, he's also there as well, right? 
And so she kind of wants Yo-Yo to be sort of like a mentor with her because she wants to change up her uh, change up her image. She doesn't want to be seen as like this rough and rugged chick that's always down to fight, ready to knock your whole head off your whole body and in, in like period point blank on God and all that. She don't want to do that no more. And so I think that's a good look. And Yo-Yo wants to help her with that. Yo-Yo says, I know Apple. I've, I've seen her on, you know, social media. She knows her from the street. So she knows the talent that she has. She knows that she's rough around the edges. And Yo-Yo and knows all she needs is a little bit of Yo-Yo in her life. And hopefully that can transform her. And I think that's a good ass look. Apple, stick with Yo-Yo. Yo, yo. Just saying. Y'all, so Lyrica Princess and one of Lyrica's homegirls, they all sitting around somebody pool somewhere talking about something, whatever, right? But they really talking about the shit that's going on in the vlogs. Of course, you know, A1 just got caught fucking around with Summer, Summer Bunny, a notorious home wrecker. I don't know her, but I don't like her because she fucked with Offset and you know I'm Cardi B gang, gang, gang all day. And so... They talking about that or whatever, right? And so her and Princess actually share a little cry because Princess, you know, Lyrica was already emotional crying, said, I thought that when I had this baby, me and you were going to grow together, we were going to get stronger. And we were for a while, but then, you know, you just allow this lifestyle to take over and kind of come in and ruin our marriage. And so Princess says she had to deal with the same thing when she was pregnant. Um, Ray J kind of started going down that same path. I don't know if he cheated on her or what, but she says that she knows what it's like to, you know, put your dreams and your ambitions on hold to try to make a family with somebody who you think is going to be there and hold. You, you, you're thinking everything is going to change. That's the problem right there. You popping out babies thinking that the nigga finna change because you done had a damn baby. Baby, that's been known over time. That ain't finna make no nigga change just because you done had a baby for him. So what? So what? Not saying nothing again, but I'm just like, girl, girl. So the home girl is like, um, she asked where A1 was. And I, you know what? I just caught that tease. Home girl asked where A1 was, but then she flipped the script and was like, oh yeah, so he gonna be here in town this week. Oh no, I take that back. Lyrica said he gonna be here in town this weekend because you know, he's on tour with T-Pain. So home girl is like, I think we should just go pop on up over there to see what the dealio is. Now, pause, this is my thing. Pop up over there and do what? Like, what is we going to do when, when you get there? It, like, okay, but I don't know. But I, I, I would like to see. I'll be here for it. Moving on from that. Y'all, so the Yo-Yo School of Hip Hop um, for the youth is expanding. She bought out some space at an aerospace in Compton. Y'all, it was dope. It's like, you know, it's like an old airport or whatever and she's hoping to transform that into like this big ass studio space where the kids can work on tracks they can learn about music they can learn about beats producing all of that y'all it was dope and for her to do some shit like that for some hood ass kids from compton to take them out of the hood and to show them something that they would not normally see that's dope as fuck yo yo you can't play with my yo 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 dope as hell or whatever right so mr ray shows up mr ray and apple watch now if y'all remember mr ray mr ray is messy as hell this is my opinion he messy as hell he was on a couple of seasons ago of love and hip-hop hollywood zell swags beat the brakes off his ass at one of the reunions i'm sorry it, it, he that was he did not deserve that ass whooping he was not ready for that ass whooping but, you know, it was kind of built up. You know what I'm saying? He kind of said some things that, you know, kind of led to that. That's kind of what happens when you talk, you know, write checks and shit. Anyways, so Mr. Ray had invited Summer Bunny's ass there to come. He introduced the Summer Bunny to Yo-Yo. Now, Yo-Yo asked, you know, well, who are you and what do you do? Yada, yada, yada. So she says she's a rapper, she sings, she models, yada, yada, yada. So um, Yo-Yo tells her, well, you know, go ahead and, you know, spit a verse for me. Now, as she's spitting a verse, Apple notices that, she, you know, she kind of notices like, wait a minute. I know this bitch. I recognize this bitch. This the bitch that fucked around with my homegirl, Lyrica's husband. I know this hoe, right? So, as she's spitting her verse, Apple kind of interrupts, does a little quick little verse, something about her sucking dick. And so, she was like, oh, no, my bad. I just know who you are. I know you used to mess with my homegirl husband and yada, yada, yada. 
Y'all, it went from a quick little this something to a full blown out argument. I mean, these heifers was fixed to, to, to go at it. I mean, straight fist the cuffs. Um, Mr. Ray had to pull Apple ass outside. Apple was getting ready to goddamn fight everybody out there. I mean, they were doing the absolute most. Summer Bunny ass too. They were both doing them in front of yo yo, bitch. Don't act like that. And that's royalty, bitch. Don't do that. Like, Aside from it being yo-yo, bitch, this is somebody that could put you on in a career in the path where you're trying to go. Like, you fucking up your blessings this way. Girl, like, calm down. But, again, Apple is my bitch, and I ride with Apple all day. But Apple kind of started this argument between the two of them. It went left, like, real, real, real damn quick. Y'all, so K. Michelle is having some kind of listening party, intimate listening party, something like that. I don't know. But, um, cause y'all know the one thing K. Michelle always doing on these shows, she always having a listening party and the bitch always looking for a house. I love the shit out some K. Michelle though. I can't even, I'm here for the listening parties and I'm here for the house hunting, bitch, let's do it. So she's having some kind of little listening party, whatever. She introduces her surrogate to everybody's there, the, everybody that's there, letting them know that, you know, soon she's going to be going through the process of getting her eggs planted. So hopefully she can get this baby girl that she's been wanting for forever. Brittany B is there. Monice is there. And April are there, right? Afterwards, the three of them are talking. And Brittany B is kind of like looking at Monice kind of sideways, like, er, like, she doing? Why? And so she, you know, introduces, formally introduces April to Brittany B. They introduce whatever. And so Monique says that she wants to put this tour together. You know, she wants to do music and that she invited April to go out on tour with her. So Brittany B is kind of like, and on her green screen, she said, I know chicks like April. You know, they come a dime a dozen. What she meant by that, I kind of felt her. You know, I felt you, girl. But her and April kind of start going in throwing shade on one another. Because Brittany did kind of say something to the fact that, well, you know, I can help you with your image. Or I can help you with this, that, and the other. Because she did tell her the one little bop that you have ain't really going to put you nowhere. So it's kind of like they kind of started getting shady back and forth with each other. So eventually, they go backstage, they talk with K. Michelle, and then K. Michelle is even looking at Monique's side eye like, bitch, what is you doing here? Well, huh, what is she doing here? So Monique tells K. Michelle, I'm going on tour, and so I'm inviting the bitch to go on tour with me. K. Michelle was then saying the same thing I was thinking. Y'all have fun with this little sister wives tour. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully y'all bitches don't kill each other, and um, hopefully y'all sell out. Let's Let's see if they come to a city near you. Take pictures and send them to me because I want to see that shit. I want to see. Later on, Brittany B is in the studio with Black China and um, Black China is saying that she's very nervous about doing this music thing. It's, it'll be something that's totally new for her. She's afraid of what people will say. She's afraid of putting her music out there. So that's something that Brittany's going to help work on with her. On another note, K, I mean, not K. Michelle, um, China is telling Brittany B that, you know, she's trying to work on the relationship with her mother, Tony. That should be something that Brittany takes and, you know, kind of takes lead from that. And she goes and works on the relationship with her mother. So I'm guessing this is going to be the whole other storyline for Brittany B. She was saying something about her mother put her out when she was very young um, to the point to where she was homeless for a couple of years. Her and her mother have not spoken to each other. I think she said in like six years. On the next episode, her and her mom said, supposed to meet up and I guess talk and go over some things um she was saying that her mother was an alcoholic and she was a drug addict and so she just did a lot of horrible things to her she didn't have a great uh, growing up and so her and her mother are gonna work on their relationship so we gonna see what's gonna happen with that um later on K. Michelle is in a doctor's office with her surrogate the doctor does the exam on the surrogate says everything is perfect with the surrogate but K. Michelle needs to produce some more eggs now K. Michelle Michelle look K. Michelle says she went through a lot with IVF. You have to be dedicated to that. I used to work in, in women's health, and I've seen women go through IVF. It's shots every day. It's a certain diet you have to be on. It's shots at the same time every day. Like, it's a lot that your body goes through. It's a lot that you have to do to be prepared for that. And so she said when she was going through IVF last time, she was still going through the surgery. She had all that silicone to fix the flat and 
fondue and all that shit in her body she was trying to get out so now that she's gotten all of that out she wants to she you know she doesn't really know if she wants to go through the whole IVF process again but um we'll see what's gonna happen from that I'm anxious to see if she's really gonna have you know go through with this and if she's gonna have because I, I want her to have her baby that she wants to have that's a blessing and I love K Michelle and that's all she's been talking about for the longest is having another child anyway so to see this manifest for her would be such a blessing. I'm here for it. We gonna move on from that. Y'all, so Mr. Ray is having some kind of listening party. I don't know what, that's what they do in Hollywood. They have fucking listening parties all that. What are these niggas listening to? But people's heels walking through there and crunching and drinking and shit. I, it, it, the music don't, I, I don't know, I don't know. I need to go to Hollywood just so I can go to a listening party. Cause I wanna know what the fuck y'all listening to. But anyways, he was having a listening party. Um. Ray J and Princess show up. Of course, Summer Bunny and Yo-Yo was there. Soon as Ray J comes in, Mr. Ray introduces Summer Bunny to Ray J and Princess. Ray J with his messy ass like, oh yeah, you know the homie A1, huh? Yeah. Princess like, oh, that's her? That would have been, that would have been me and my husband. That would have been me and my husband. I ain't gonna lie. My husband be like, oh, you the old. He'd be like, baby, that's how I'm like, oh, that's that bitch from me. I'll bitch you like, that's that bitch right there. That would have been, that would have been me and Mr. right there. So, Yo-Yo tells Ray J that she didn't know that Apple and Summer Bunny had issues, that, that they had beef. She tells him about what happened when they were over there at the Aerospace in Compton, how they almost got to knocking planes and shit over, getting ready to fight because it went down over there. Baby, as soon as they say that, who walks through the door? Apple Watts and Lyrica. Bitch, right when it was finna get ready, good, good. And you know Apple Watts. She on that old real ass bitch give a fuck what she talking about. She walked through the door talking about what's up, what's good, what's good. I'm ready for next week's episode. I want to see what the hell is going to happen to VH1. Don't you goddamn play with me. I need to see. It needs to pick up. I need to keep that same energy. So when it comes on next week, Monday, 7 o'clock, I need it to be popping right, right then and there. This episode was good, y'all. I have no reason to complain about it. Um, Let me know what y'all think about this review. If y'all seen the episode, if it was some parts I left out, let me know. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.